Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Bite Size PD Playworks Indoor Play. My name is Meredith Dolny, and I am the Playworks Coordinator for the district. We're all familiar with our professional norms, but just a kind reminder to be committed, responsible, respectful, and safe while we're here together. While we're on Google Meet, please mute yourself and turn off your camera if you'd like. Uh, please use the chat if you have any questions or a comment. You can always reach out to myself or our other Playworks coordinator, Andrew Romero, if you have any other questions. When looking at our MTSS framework, play fits really nicely into the PBIS section where we focus on building positive relationships with our students and use the high ratio of positive feedback. Playing games with your students is a great way to build rapport and give lots of positive feedback to your students, especially those who might struggle with behavior in other content areas. For this training, our learning intention is that you are learning ways to incorporate play and movement into your classroom. We'll know you're successful if you can introduce a game or playful technique with your students. Today, I'll begin with a little background and overview of Playworks, then we'll get into some games that can be played in your classroom, other ways you can incorporate play throughout your day with your students, and I'll leave you with our indoor recess guide made with teachers in mind. So a little bit of overview for Playworks. Playworks is a national nonprofit that partners with elementary schools to help provide safe and healthy play at recess. Playworks mission statement is, we believe in the power of play to bring out the best in every kid. I also like to add, it brings out the best in us adults too. While Playworks has been around since 1996, we've had it here in Canyon since 2012. As we approach our 10th year partnering with Playworks, we as a district value the benefits that recess brings to our students in and out of the classroom. When students have positive experiences recess with consistent systems and engaged adults, there are many benefits that come back inside the classroom with them. The Society of Health and Physical Educators, or SHAPE, has compiled evidence-based research to create this top 10 reasons for recess list you see here. Through play, students improve cognitive skills such as memory, attention, and other great things you want in your classroom. A healthy recess also supports lowering stress levels and supports those life skills such as cooperation, conflict resolution, and honesty. Through positive experiences around physical activity, our students not only get the recommended amount of movement they need each day, but it helps foster a lifetime of healthy activity. Overall, healthy play outside leads to greater academic and behavior achievement inside. Because play has so many benefits, we want to incorporate it as, as much as possible when we are able to. Think of the times when your students would benefit most from a quick brain break with movement. This might be right before or after a test when they're feeling anxious or need to sit and focus for a long period of time, or it could be within when they're patiently and quietly waiting in the hall during a transition. I'll quickly go over a few games that can work really well with students at their desks or that can be played while waiting in line. The first two games are perfect for getting students out of their desks and getting their heart rate up while practicing listening skills. The first game is called Up, Down, Stop, Go. While standing by their desks, students will perform an action while you call out one of the four commands. Up represents a jump in place, down can be squatting or just hands on their knees, go can be anything from dancing to fast feet or running in place, while stop means they freeze. You can change up the actions if you'd like, but you call out these actions and the students must do them. If they do the wrong one, they can sit back down and you eventually narrow it down to the last students. You can have the final winner be the next round leader. You can challenge them by the speed you call the commands out, or you can play the opposite way where they have to do the opposite motion with what you call out. Land, Sea, Air is a very similar game, but where students listen for your commands as they cycle through land, sea, and air in whatever order you'd like. Students must pick a starting point where they'll designate as land. When you call land, they must hop, or sorry, <laughs> they'll designate as land. C would be a hop in front of where they were just standing. When you call land, they must hop back to that starting point. When you call out air, students will jump straight up and land straight back down from where they just were standing. So for example, if you call out C while they're in C, they must stay still. 
Once again, if they do the wrong motion from what you call out, you can have them sit down. For either one of these games, if you don't want to do elimination style, if you'd like them to get back into the game, you can have them do a few jumping jacks or spin around three times, whatever you'd like, to encourage movement while also allowing them to continue participating. Line of silence is pretty straightforward, but this can be used as a playful way to pass the time if they're waiting in line or a way to line them up that isn't number order. You will choose a category for them to silently, silently <laughs> line up for. So for example, you can tell them they'll line up by height where you'll designate one end for the tallest and the other end being the shortest. The students will have to communicate in nonverbal ways to get lined up. For an extra challenge, you can give them a time limit or do something that isn't visual, visually available to decide, like by their birth month or alphabetically by their first or last name. The things to remember with these games is that they are short and easy to play and teach. It encourages movement, which is really a good thing to do, especially if we're trapped inside on those indoor recess days. And um, once they're taught, students are able to lead these games for you as well. Like I said before, Playworks believes in the power of play to bring out the best in every kid every day, including those inside rainy days. While lunch recess may be taken care of for you by your recess aides, we want to support play happening during your grade level recesses. We value all types of play, which can look like reading, drawing, doing puzzles, or dancing along with Go Noodle. With 60 minutes of daily activity being the goal, we love when our students have the opportunity to get up and move around safely, while also having the chance to practicing those life skills like cooperation, following directions, and resolving their own conflicts. The first game that many of you might be familiar with is called Four Corners. In the game, you will designate each corner of your room with a number that students will move between while someone in the center of the room counting down from 10 with their eyes closed. Once the counter gets to zero, they will pick a corner which they believe has students, usually based on the sound they're making. The students in the corner that is picked can either sit back down in their desks um, or they'll have to do a task like jumping jacks to continue on to the next round. You can switch out the counter with a certain amount of turns once everyone is sitting back in their desks or after a time li limit like for two minutes or so. If you'd like to modify this for academics, you could have the chosen corner students have to do simple math problems, define a vocabulary word, or practice spelling as a group. We love this game because it encourages safe movement and being quiet as a part of the strategy. Silent Ball is another pretty popular game where students are able to practice throwing and catching, but a safe way inside. With students standing around the room, they toss the ball or any other soft object you have in your room works around to their classmates. Once again, they sit back down in their desks if they drop the ball, make a bad pass, or talk. For students to remain in the game, they must cooperate and help each other with good passes. You can restart the game when only one student remains or whenever you'd like if you'd like to keep them participating. Night at the Museum is another great game that can be played in the classroom that encourages safe movement. For this game, you will pick a night guard whose job it is to make sure that all the students stay statues. While the night guard walks around the room, students within their view will remain frozen while those who are out of their line of sight can dance or move to another spot. If the night guard sees someone move, that student would be out either back to their desk or once again, doing a movement like jumping jacks to get back in the game. Through these games, we hope the students are able to move safely and get their wiggles out so they're ready to get back to learning. With each game being able to be reset, students aren't sitting too long before their next turn and cooperation is key in all the games for students to remain in and to be successful. So, how can you incorporate play throughout your day? Like I mentioned with games like Four Corners, you can always add an element of practicing the learning your students have done or reviewing material in a fun way. Instead of doing jumping jacks or high knees or spinning in circles, they can spell out words as a group. In passing games like Silent Ball, students can review vocabulary definitions or solve math problems before tossing it to another student. Another key element to Playworks is conflict resolution that students can do on their own. 
I've walked by many classrooms and heard students playing Rochambeau, otherwise known as scissors, paper, rock, in classrooms to determine who goes first in partner activities or to solve who got to the spot in line first. Whether it's, help, it's to help decide who reads out loud first or solve a conflict, Rochambeau is a fast and fair way that students can use without teacher support. Another way you can incorporate play in your classroom is the way you do your group management. We use fun and engaging attention getters like one, two, three, eyes on me, one, two, eyes on you. But we want to encourage you to mix it up. While you can have your go-to for consistency, adding new callbacks increases level of engagement, especially if students find them entertaining. Silly ones like easy peasy, lemon squeezy, or who lives in a pineapple under the sea, SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, that can shake up your routine in a really fun way. Before releasing students to do any activity, we use a go word in Playworks. This word is a signal that students must wait for to start whatever activity you're beginning. After students have chosen the word, this normally sounds like, on our go word of Mustangs, you'll need to do three things. The first thing is to give a high five to your neighbor, then you'll grab your Chromebooks, and then you'll come back to your seats. This can be playful and add a fun aspect to something they do every single day, like lining up or turning papers in, whatever it looks like. Go words can also be related to each content you're teaching. For example, if you're going over the ways weather impacts the earth in science, you can use erosion to begin their group work. So while I quickly and very briefly went over six games and several ways to incorporate play, we have lots of other games and activities that you can try in your class or at recess. I've added a link right here on that blue cover to our indoor recess guide classroom edition that was made with teachers in mind. Within this guide, you'll find games that range from quick minute movers similar to up, down, stop, go, to games that can be enjoyed for an entire lunch recess. While designated, for, well, sorry, while designed for limited space, quiet noise levels, and using basically no equipment, these games can be taught and played respectfully and safely in your classroom. So I invite you all to take on the challenge to bring more play into your classroom. This might be on an indoor recess day or when you're finding yourself waiting in the hallway during a transition, but I'd like you to try on a game or an activity that gives your students a chance to move a little, Practice those healthy life skills and to simply have fun. Not only will this support you with building rapport with your students, it will give you an opportunity to praise them in unique and fun ways. And you might even have some fun yourself. So thank you so much for attending this training. Please feel free to reach out to myself, Meredith Dolney, or Andrew Romero. You can, you can see our emails in the very beginning of this. Um, if you have any questions concerning play at your school, your Playworks IT, recess aides, and junior coach leaders are also fantastic resources found right in your building. Thanks so much.